Can you wait a little moment? The Master Diviner will be here soon. She's temporarily taken on the General's responsibilities. Before meeting you, she must make the current situation known and fortify public spirit. This is her first real test as a general. I hope she can get used to things quickly. I don't think I can ever get used to this. It's a pleasure to see you all here today. Collating casualties and losses. Dispatching forces to round up the remnants of the Disciples. Submitting battle reports to the Six Charioteers. Now I know what Jing Yuan meant when he said, The highest throne faces the strongest wins. Generalship is no trifling matter. How could I be enjoying myself? All I can do is get used to it. <laughs> I think she's enjoying herself. Master Diviner, have you summoned us here just to sigh and complain? Of course not. On the contrary. I am eager to thank you all in my official capacity as Acting General of the Law Fu. Now that things have drawn to a conclusion, it is time to reward you. Ooh, all those benefits that the General promised! They're finally here! Yippee! Yes. The Astral Express has braved great evil for the Law Fu. Your devotion is evident. After discussions with the Six Charioteers, you are henceforth sworn allies of the Law Fu. Within the Law Fu's jurisdiction, you are to be treated with the highest standard of diplomatic protocol. On behalf of the Astral Express, I would like to thank you, Master Diviner. Oh, wow. Nothing tangible, then? Uh, but at least it sounds pretty cool. Now that things have been expressed, I still have something to discuss with you. Please, this way. Uh, seriously? Thanking us like that and then immediately sending us on another mission? It's not a mission. The Stellaron Crisis, the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus Rebellion, the Arbor's Resurrection, not to mention the Antimatter Legion infiltrating the Law Fu. All of these incidents need reporting at the highest level for investigation. It's just that, having been in the middle of everything, I'm struggling to keep an accurate perspective. I would appreciate if you could go through it all with me so that I can reacquaint myself with a finer detail. So, where should we begin? It appears that Fantilia was the mastermind behind it all. The Xianzhou warred with the Antimatter Legion in the past, and ever since we have kept a watchful eye on their movements. Few could have foreseen the insidious tactics employed in the execution of their assaults. The Lord Ravager slithered in unnoticed, clandestinely plotting and machinating, and surreptitiously bestowed a Stellaron upon the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus. This heinous act instigated an uprising aimed at luring the Lafu into a perilous trap of self-destruction. The present danger posed by the Legion clearly demands a re-evaluation. We should proceed cautiously. When the Ambrosial Arbor was severed by the Rainbow Arbiter thousands of years ago, the Abundance became a taboo. Those within the Alchemy Commission, the original masters of the so-called Way of Immortality, were ruined at a stroke. The Commission became a shadow of its former self. Presumably, from that moment on, the seeds of discord for the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus had already been planted. Some of them were willing to work with the enemy, 
acquiring a Stellaron from the Antimatter Legion to try and revive the Abundance. Hmm. They succeeded all right. But why would Fantilia's objective to be to realize their wishes? Those traitors gained nothing. They betrayed the Xianzhou only to become sacrificial offerings in the Lord Ravager's grand scheme. The Stellaron Hunters. We know just as little. But in the Matrix of Prescience, I saw a prophecy that Kafka received from Destiny's Slave. Elio foresaw all manner of possibilities for the Law Fu. Based on what Kafka knows, and despite everything being under the control of Elio, that prophecy is indeed the most beneficial future for the Law Fu. The Stellaron Hunters walked right into our trap, and even gifted allies, in the form of yourselves, to the Sien Zhou. That might sound self-interested, but I hope the feeling is mutual. Now that the future has come true, the Sien Zhou has discovered the Legion's intentions, and with everyone's help, has imposed a crushing defeat on Fantilia. That we may. But as logical as things might seem, there are still many details about which we're uncertain. For example, how was the Stellaron brought onto the Sien Zhou? And who sent it onto Scale Gorge Waterscape? How many disciples of Sanctus Medicus still remain at large? All of this is a mystery. Thus far, we've done our best. I'm submitting my report to the Alliance, and I've already got a plan in mind. All of you will feature in the report, but for the sake of Jin Yuan, anything related to Xian Zhou internal affairs will have names redacted. I hope you can forgive me. I was about to make the same request, Master Diviner. Since the Arbor's resurrection, I'm sure the Alliance will be poring over every detail of the report. I fear that if the Astral Express gets dragged into matters, leaving will not be an easy task. Mm. Jing Yuan has committed quite a few violations this time around, and I'll have to deal with them one by one. <sighs> Cloud Knight Generals are all such a hassle. Before you leave, please make time to recuperate. If there's anywhere you'd like to visit, Feel free to take a look. I must attend to some Cloud Knight matters. Farewell for now. Oh, if you pass through Starskiff Haven, I have something that I hope you can give to Yuko. <sighs> it was all so chaotic. When Fantilia took form, it was as if Ting Yun vanished into thin air. The Cloud Knights were only able to find her fan. She took it with her everywhere. It's currently unclear if Ting Yun was a puppet manipulated by Fantilia, or if some form of deception was used to cloud her vision. I'm already prepared for the worst. Considering how the Legion operates, I fear the fate of the Skyfaring Commission Amic Hassider may be a bleak one. As for how matters are handled with regards to Ting Yun, I believe it's best left to her foxy and Ken. I have informed the Skyfaring Commission of the events which took place. And I think it would be best if you were the one to deliver this item to Yu Kong. I understand. Leave it with us. Thank you, Mr. Yang. Now, let me take a look at my remaining duties for the day. <sighs> it's quite the list. It's getting late. If you need me, I'll be in the Divination Commission Conclave Hall. Things have come to a close, for now. It's good that you came through unscathed. The Master Diviner asked us to pass on this item of Ting Yun's. I'll go to the Palace of Astrum and meet with Yu Kong. If neither of you has anything urgent, it'd be best if you came too. Well, we had a lot of stumbles along the way, but we still managed to kick butt and save the Law Fu without breaking a sweat. 
This feels kind of surreal. You don't sound very happy. It may seem like the Stellaron Hunters are controlling everything, but we create our own future. No matter how powerful they are, they can't make a future that doesn't exist come true. Since showing up, we've saved a lot of people and averted disaster for the whole Sian show. Who cares whether someone or something was directing it? Be happy! Actually, I was wondering if Divine or Fu could do me a favor. The Matrix of Prescience has amazing powers and can iterate and reiterate Kafka's past. So it got me thinking, if I turned the Matrix on me, could it calculate my past? I was shy. Talking about personal stuff like that in front of everyone? It'd be too embarrassing. When you're free, let's go hit up the Divination Commission together and see what Fu Shen has to say. I see. Please extend my regards to the Ten Lords. I will. Our condolences, Hellmaster. You have guests. I shall take my leave. <clears throat> On behalf of the Skyfaring Commission, I would like to thank the crew of the Express for saving the Law Fu from the Stellaron Crisis. Madame Yukong must have heard about Miss Tingyun. Yes, I have heard. Seeing four leave, yet only three return, was enough for me to know that Fu Xuan's report was indeed correct. Ting Yun. I still can't believe it. The whole report reads like a bad joke. Simply unimaginable. The Antimatter Legion on the Xianzhou? And Ting Yun? A Lord Ravager? How could someone who spent over 30 years working alongside me at the Skyfaring Commission turn out to be nothing more than a monster in disguise? What happened to the real Ting Yun? Ah, uh, Madame Yukong. I'm sorry. I understand. It's just hard for me to accept. <sighs> Thank you for bringing Ting Yun's belongings back to the Palace of Astrum. The Stellaron Crisis has cost us too many comrades. Brothers. Sisters. Children. I'd like to invite all of you, as witnesses to this war, to a soul-soothing ceremony hosted by the Skyfaring Commission. Will you consider? A soul-soothing ceremony? To put it into short life terms, a funeral. You see, for long-life species of the Xianzhou, death has always been a distant, mystical concept. Ordinarily, the Ten Lords Commission guides people to the Hall of Karma before any symptoms of Mara are detected. There, they leave behind their lives and wait for their time to come. People are used to a short farewell as opposed to a tedious burial process. Given our limited lifespans, the only ones who place value on ceremony are us Foxians. Countless Cloud Knights lost their lives or became Mara-struck during the crisis. The Hall of Karma couldn't take them all in, and so they passed away. All of these sudden deaths and unfulfilled wishes remind us that long-life species still live out insignificant and limited lives. By combining Skyfaring Commission technology with Foxian ceremony, we honor those who have passed on. We place items of the dead onto star skiffs and send them out to sail between the stars, 
to shine brightly among them. It's not just to comfort the dead, those souls who can never talk with us again, but also to comfort their surviving relatives, close friends, and indeed all residents of the Xianzhou. It's also my way of saying farewell to Ting Yun. I know, I'm selfish. She may not have died a cloud night, but she's still one of us here at the Skyfaring Commission. A victim caught up in a wider conflict. I'd like to hold this ceremony as a way of distancing the memory of Ting Yun from the Lord Ravager who tarnished her identity. I can still hardly believe it. I'll use my own methods to locate Ting Yun's whereabouts, but at present, I... <sighs> this is the least I can do for her. I'd like to ask you all to witness this event with me. I've instructed Yen Ming to sort through Ting Yun's belongings. I hope you can pick some out to place around the Star Scaff. Leave this to us. We'll take care of it as per your wishes, Madame Yukong. Once again, my thanks to all of you. I've asked the judges of the Ten Lords Commission to ratify this soul-soothing ceremony, and have commissioned a special skiff at Stargazer Novalia for the ceremony. If you need anything, that's where I'll be. You always did say that I like to gossip. And here I am, rambling on, proving you right again. If only you were here to cut me off. Oh. It's you. For a moment, I thought she'd return. Did the Helm Master send you over? We're here to help sort out Miss Ting Yun's things. Madame Yukong wants to use some of them for her soul-soothing ceremony. Well, I've managed to get through pretty much everything. It's all in this box. Please, take your time. Okay, let's see what there is. An Annie Cassiter seal, a small box, a knife, a bow, and something wrapped up tight. I wonder what this is. Looks like some kind of... antique? But who'd want to hold on to something like this? Oh, Ting Yun explained that one to me. It's a folk statuette from Foxy in Antiquity. They say it can bring wealth, if placed correctly. There's also a note in the package. This is for you, Mr. Yen Ming. Wishing you fortune and success in every endeavor. Yen Ming, it seems like this is a gift for you, from Miss Ting Yun. I... I remember asking her for one at the time. <laughs> this is unexpected. I... I only mentioned it in passing, but she remembered. Ting Yun and I were from different guilds. We were competitors, but also colleagues. When we used to trade in other lands, we would bring back local specialties and distribute them among friends and other guild members. It became a custom. The rivalry between us and the Whistling Flames to be the Skyfaring Commission's top guild was always fierce. We would gift each other all kinds of bizarre oddities. Candy that made your leg hair grow. A violin that could shatter glass with its piercing shriek. Oh, I was completely unprepared for this. I never thought Ting Yun would leave something behind for me that was so... sincere and earnest. If I don't return a gift, I'll lose our little duel. But what could I possibly gift her back? Huh. Besides the seal, the knife, and the bow, none of this seems like something Miss Ting Yun would have kept. 
I thought she was more about jewelry and beauty. Could there be other things similar to what Yan Ming got? We should take a look. There's nothing else, except a handful of seeds. It looks like there's something printed on the bottom of the box. The Sleepless Earl. Let me think. Where have I seen that name before? I can't cook to save my life, but one thing I'm sure of is, that's a kitchen knife. I've never seen Miss Ting Yun use anything like that to defend herself. It must be another gift that she never had time to send. There's an ad in the knife case. Spices Supreme. A room alley? Which store is that again? This bow. It's a good bow. It couldn't be meant for me. Could it? All right, just kidding. <laughs> just trying to liven things up around here. Do you know where we're supposed to take these things? Oh, how's it going? Did you take some time off? See any more of the Sienjo? Isn't that the place on Aram Alley over an exalting sanctum? All the foodies go there. What about it? Planning on treating me to a feast? It's the main commercial street in the Exalting Sanctum. Although it's a lot quieter since the whole Stellaron Crisis thing. Tourists fresh off the Starskiff always head to Starwatcher Avenue in Starskiff Haven. It's one of those bustling tourist streets. But if you want the real deal on local snacks, you've got to get to Aram Alley. I've marked it out for you on your map. Whenever I'm tired of Celestial Jade or slacking off, I head over for a bowl of Granny Chen's tofu. Darn it, now that you've brought it up, I suddenly don't feel like clocking in for work anymore. A uh, spice is supreme! Check out that sign! Here it is! Honored guests, welcome to our humble eatery. What can we get for you today? Oh, something from Miss Tingyun for me? Oh, ah, what a precious person she is. Ah, a sweet thing like her, gifting me a kitchen knife. When she first ate here, I told her my motto, you can't better your own food unless you taste it. <laughs> then she got me to talk about my hunting and cooking experiences out on other worlds. She was captivated. She pestered me about dish after dish. At the end, she mentioned she wanted to get me a gift. A sword for a hero, and a knife for a chef. <laughs> That's how she put it. She probably came across some rare mineral and forged it by hand. <sighs> Look how sharp it is. I'd bet it cut straight through a Thalassa Titanium Terrapin shell. <sighs> Miss Tingyun is too kind. Who among the Aram Alley vendors hasn't been spoiled by the generosity of whistling flames? Her grand fair puts small merchants like us in touch with big intergalactic vendors. If we're talking gifts, it's us who should be gifting her something. Oh, I heard the trade port is open again for business. Miss Tingyun must be real busy, right? This... This is real, right? The monster you mentioned, where did it come from? I wish... I wish I could take this knife and cut it to ribbons. <sighs> Forget it. Matters like these are beyond the control and understanding of a cook like me. Huh. Thank you, all of you. Let me prepare a dish for you as a gift. For Miss Tang Yun.
It was our chili oil beef awful stew that first attracted Miss Ting Yun to our restaurant. I can't believe that she'll never taste it again. Please, you'll have to eat her share too. The Sleepless Earl. Was that the name of that tea house at the port when we first got into town? Welcome to the Sleepless Earl. I'm the owner here. The name's Ming Ming. How many of you are there? Which tea would you like today? Oh, this is... This is the tea Miss Ting Yun promised to get for me. She really went to another world for me. She's incredible. When I took over this tea house from my parents, I thought I'd shake things up by creating a new tea product. Famous brews like Whale Tide Spring or Vegetations in the Alchemy Cauldron have been around for millennia, and imported mixed teas have also found a niche. Introducing a new product into the industry is really hard. Miss Ting Yun came to the tea house one day and heard about my troubles. She said she could find me a brand new strain during her travels. One that nobody on the Cienjo had ever tasted. I just thought she was trying to cheer me up. I never thought she'd actually do it. Where is Miss Ting Yun today? Yes. Now that the crisis has been averted and the ports are resuming operations, Miss Ting Yun has been dispatched on business with the Skyfaring Commission out to other worlds. Oh, really? Hmm, well, that's a shame. Well, hold on a sec. Based on her suggestion, I improved the Whale Tide Spring, Emerald Hills, and Dawn Dew strains to make a new variety with a sweet, long-lasting taste. I called it Ting Yun's Blend. Seeing as she can't enjoy it right now, I'll have to invite all of you to try a cup. About that bow, I think I know who Miss Ting Yun intended to gift it to. Mr. Yen Ming said an Ami Cassiter will return with a gift for a trusted colleague. The person who Ting Yun trusts the most is Madame Yu Kong, right? What brings you here? This bow. Did Ting Yun pick it out for me? She understood my pain. It's a shame I can no longer do anything for her. Thirty years ago, I fought in a terrible war. My comrade and I set sail together, but only I returned. The scars of that war never truly healed. Still, the Law Fu traced out its arc of recovery and continued to trade. I felt tired of voyaging, like I'd lost the courage to pull on a bowstring ever again. I hid away in the Skyfaring Commission and buried myself in work, never wanting to see the sky again. Despite rising to Helm Master, my military career hadn't prepared me for the type of meticulous planning work now confronting me. Ting Yun, on the other hand, was a born merchant, always discussing business matters with me and offering up advice, even if she was my subordinate. She never fought alongside me on the battlefield, but in her own way, she became a comrade in arms. Without the help of Ting Yun and the Guild, the Law Fu would not have been able to recover in the space of just thirty short years. I used to think that the Xian Zhou had changed with the times. Geniuses like Ting Yun were the future for the Skyfaring Commission's next generation. They would bring prosperity to the Law Fu. I was only ever suited to the flames of war. I was wrong. Only when the last minions of the Antimatter Legion are wiped out, will I become useless to the Xianzhou. 
The Sienjo needs people like me. Those willing to cruise the sky and fight the flames. The Star Skiff is ready for the ceremony now. Everyone, please place your objects aboard the Star Skiff. Wait! Wait for me! Miss Ting Yun prepared a gift for me. As a fellow Amakasador, I cannot fail to honor our custom. Yan Ming, what is it that you've prepared? I... I've brought a paper kite. I know it may seem simple compared to the precious items that Ting Yun gifted others in the past, but... It has a deeper meaning. I heard that Foxians have a tradition where paper kites are used to comfort the souls of pilots who can no longer take to the skies. Ting Yun and I were never pilots in the strictest sense of the word, but we spent much of our lives out among the stars. For her to be able to take wing once again would make her very happy. Out of all this stuff we've got, what do you think we should place on the star skiff? Thank you for everything you've done for the Skyfaring Commission and the Law Fu. This small seal is the foundation of the Sien Zhou's prosperity. This is the tea that Meng Ming has made. Especially named after you. This is a gift from Miss Yen Sui on behalf of all the restaurants on Arum Alley. You're going to love this. This time, we needn't compete. Go. Fly on to other distant worlds. The Skyfaring Commission shall never forget you, Ting Yun. I will seek out the truth. And if it is discovered that you were taken from us, I swear to avenge your unjust end. It is time for the soul-soothing ceremony. Please make your way to Earthrise Agora in Starskiff Haven. General, the ceremony is finished. You should take a rest. Not yet. I have things I wish to convey to my astral friends. My apologies, I couldn't get to you any sooner. Yen Ching made sure that I was fully recuperated. Before you leave the Lofu, there are two things I wish to gift the Express. Uh, two gifts? Has his conscience finally gotten the better of him? Is he going to make up for all our hard work along the way? Please. Let us reconvene at the seat of divine foresight. Present company is gathered to reiterate the Sienjo La Fu's esteemed gratitude for the magnanimous actions of the Nameless. I am sure Lady Fu has given voice to this already, but the Law Fu is greatly indebted to you. Therefore, on behalf of the Law Fu Cloud Knights, I hereby present you with a Jade Abacus, a symbol of our allied friendship.
back when the Alliance was first established. All those thousands of years ago, the Sienjo ships swore an oath, etching the record into a jade abacus. The world may crumble, and the heavens may fall, but this oath shall never be broken. The same is true of this jade abacus. It is a record of the Law Fu Cloud Knight's promise to the crew of the Astral Express. It is also a beacon. Grip it tightly, and it will send a message to the Jade Abacus here, in my hand. No matter how astronomically distant you are, the Law Fu Cloud Knights will always come to the aid of the crew, whatever your need may be. Wow, now that's what I call a payoff. <clears throat> of course, I trust that such an important article will not be used for trivial or inappropriate circumstances. I hope you can understand. Yep, got it. Say no more, sure thing. Thank you for your generosity, General. Don Hong. General. In accordance with the Edict of the Ten Lords Commission, I am hereby authorized to relieve your banishment decree. From this day henceforth, you may come and go freely on the Law Fu. Nice! But I must remind you that the crimes of Don Fong have had far-reaching implications. And some people, such as those in Scale Gorge Waterscape, will not be much moved by the issuance of a paper edict. While I can guarantee your freedom to come and go as you please, I cannot guarantee your safety. Again, I hope you can understand. I understand. This issuing of gifts brings with it a sense of relief. Even my wound is feeling much improved. The occasion calls for a line or two of poetry. Um, though I feel my efforts would be overshadowed by the erudition of Lady Fu. Another time, perhaps. The Express and its passengers have a long voyage ahead of them. May that voyage be smooth and untrammeled. <laughs> I bid you farewell. Oh, hi. I know we haven't got the chance to get acquainted, but I've heard a lot of good things about the crew from the General. I have to say, I'm very impressed. So soon? Ugh, I wanted to help the General, but things didn't turn out how I wanted them to be. I've learned my lesson. Also, I have a rather abrupt request. After fighting Don Hong, I feel like my skills are lacking somewhere. If you have any time to coach me... <laughs> Deal. Safe travels. Himiko messaged me. The Express detected the Jade Gate's reopening. She asked whether we'd be heading back anytime soon. She was also asking after you, Don Hung. I think it'd be best if you update her in person, don't you think? She must have been worried. I'll return to the train and put her mind at rest. Himeko must be eager to hear about what we've been up to on this mission too, right? Uh, hang on. Oh, how could I forget? We should bring something back for the conductor. Have you got any unfinished business on the Sienjo? Uh, I've got goldfish memory. We haven't had a chance to say goodbye to everyone we met so far on this trip. Fine, fine. Don Hung and I will go back to the Express. The two of you come back soon, okay? <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Yang. Uh, we've been so busy running around in circles, we haven't gotten the chance to say goodbye to friends we've just met. I feel like parting is still such sweet sorrow. Who should I go to first? The Master Diviner? Jingchu? The Miracle Doctor? 
Or what about Master Gongshu? Ah, uh, shall we go and meet them all? When I left the train, I only had time to say a quick goodbye to Himiko. I should go back and give her an update. And thank her for her guidance. There's a dreamlike quality to watching these star skiffs depart through the Jade Gate. How long will these ships sail? And which stars are they traveling to? From a universal perspective, there is little difference between the lives of long and short life species. The transcendence that the Sienjo pursues is nothing compared to the enduring majesty of the stars. And the grief felt here is no different from our own. <gasps> You're back! Welt was telling me about your experiences. I'm more than a little envious. The Ambrosial Arbor, the Ebon Deer, the Divination Commission Matrix, Scale Gorge Waterscape. I pestered Don Hung to tell me about his experiences, but alas, what could have been a magnificent saga was reduced to a few words and a grunt. Next time, I think I should be the one trailblazing with you guys. Well, can stay on the express. <laughs> Since when did the work roster just change like that? Penaconi, do you remember? Before Kafka's proposal, that was our original destination. The Express's records show that Penaconi was a prison planet used by the IPC to exile criminals. At least, it was at the time of recording. However, following a Stellaron burst, the planet fell into the arms of Shipe. They say it's been transformed into a prosperous and ethereal realm. The family is throwing a banquet there, and they sent invitations out to the Express. I was curious about the state of the planet, so I accepted. When the conductor is ready, we can set off for the next stop. <clears throat> All who enter here are either jailers or prisoners. Which are you? <laughs> Neither. I'm merely a lost traveler. <gasps> What a spectacle. The Stellaron, the Ambrosial Arbor, the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus, the Lord Ravager. A series of threats that almost succeeded in diverting attention away from the crucial question. They who brought the Stellaron onto the Sienjo, what was their motive? <laughs> Will you surrender, or do you require encouragement? Abomination of Yaosher. General, my power does indeed stem from the Abundance. But I'm the same as you. We are both enemies of Yaoshu. <laughs> That's right, Jing Wen. <gasps> Stay out of our way. The revival of the Arbor is an omen. It's time for the Sienjo to choose its next path. The Rainbow Arbiter, the Plague's author, <gasps> the Ruin author. This is a chess game between eons. If you don't stand with the winners, you stand to lose. And this time, we will put the abundance in their grave. Our time on the Sienjo has come to an end. Back to the original plan, I suppose? Penaconi is throwing a banquet. I've received an invitation from the family. When the conductor is ready, we can set off for the next stop. <laughs> 